Resting in a remote corner of the Congo is one of the most biodiverse regions in Africa. Virtually inaccessible by modern science for decades due to instability and warfare, very little is known about the area's ecology. Out here, science isn't done in the lab. It's done in the face of harsh conditions and constant uncertainty. Flying into the DRC, I find myself feeling extremely nervous. I'm leaving everything behind and entering an area fraught with conflict. For the next two weeks, this forgotten landscape will be my home. Welcome to Pemba National Park. We are literally just traveled here from Limbambashi and I'm joining Chris Boys and the Hankuzi expedition to head out into this wilderness and explore this ecosystem, but also just get the baseline study of what scientific data exists out here. We're right up in the northeast of Pemba National Park on the Kibara Plateau, which is one of the two major water tower plateaus of the park but it's also encompassing deep gorges with beautiful forests in them to grasslands of the plateau with the gallery forests following the rivers to the ancient Lafira Valley. That river has been flowing its course for over 30 million years, which has given it the time to have incredible speciation and incredible endemism. These incredible endemic species can be extremely affected you know, because they're very isolated. So, you know, once their environment changes around them, they will disappear and be lost forever. The mission now is just to really understand where this landscape is and where it is going and how we can possibly steer it into a place where it's, you know, ecologically stable. I'm accompanying the team of 11 scientists as they conduct a series of rigorous scientific surveys throughout the park. As Opemba has been off limits to researchers for years, every bit of data brings us closer to understanding the ecosystem. My tent. Team. Legends. For me, being here is so amazing because it's Democratic Republic of Congo. It's got some of the highest biodiversity of reptiles and frogs on the planet. So being here, it's like, it's like being an actor and going to Hollywood. We have a, a mixed team. So we have two English native English speakers. We've got two native French slash Swahili speakers. Most of the time, uh, it's very basic communication. And when we struggle, it's a bit of sign language and a lot of laughing. Cette collaboration, moi, je peux dire que c'est magnifique et c'est pour nous même. On nous dit des fois, est-ce que la nature ne vous apprend telle pas Si la nature collabore, les écosystèmes collaborent entre eux. Qu'a devenu la pour nous, les humains Science is a lot more messy than it is often perceived to be. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of craft, a lot of problem solving and a lot of working things out to try and get to these answers. Donc dès que les serpents viennent de par exemple de ces de, de cette direction, il sera euh, buté à, 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 à cette histoire jusqu'à ce que les serpents puissent suivre le chemin euh, de ce truc jusqu'à jusqu'à tomber dans, dans le saut qui est au milieu. Euh, and this technique, nous la, nous, ça, ça s'appelle la technique de pitfall. This is the gallery forest trap. We've got the wetland trap, which is about 2.6 k's up the road. And then about 600 meters from here, we've got the grassland trap. So each of them are completely distinctive biomes. They've got what we assume different fauna living in them. These two apparatus in front of us, well, these are for picking up audible sounds. So, one is for bats, uh, which is that one over there with the exterior mic on the edge there. And this one here is for sounds within um, the human hearing ability. Because bat calls each species as individual, you can determine species diversity. 
and so that's what we want to do is try and compare much like with all the other taxa is how does it differ between each habitat type. Okay, je suis en train de placer les caméras trap et voilà après avoir installé je dois euh, armer la caméra pour que ça commence à, à capturer à chaque, à chaque mouvement euh, d'un objet euh, dans le champ de vision de la caméra. The more you sample, the more your understanding grows. So this is a snapshot. We're here in dry season for a few weeks. This is our understanding of it now. But the more we come back, the more scientists we bring in, the better we'll understand the park and for how to protect it. We are here to study the biodiversity in these rivers, the fish and so on so that they can know what is in the rivers and probably set some uh, uh, strategy to, to preserve these fishes. En me basant sur le travail que mon collègue, le professeur Boucher, a fait, il a découvert qu'en RDC, on, a, on est autour de 1300, on a autour de 1300 espèces de poissons. Et dans ce, dans ce parc ici, il y en a uh, 300. Ce qui signifie qu'un poisson sur cinq connu du bassin du Congo se trouve ici. Ça veut dire si on protège très bien ce, ce, ce parc ici avec les, ces écosystèmes aquatiques, même si on arrivait à dessiner tous les poissons du bassin du Congo, on resterait quand même avec un cinquième de cette diversité ici dans ce parc. We have to do um, our aquatic sampling. We have to take benthic samples from the river. We're going to take SAS samples from the river, three eDNA samples, nutrient analysis. Then we're going to take a phytoplankton filter. Then we have to repeat this at every significant water body. There's just tons and tons of water pumping off this plateau. And based on our cursory evidence, it seems like the nutrients in them is very, very good. This water is super pure. Where this water all goes is into the greater Congo River system, which is one of the three major river systems in Africa, which supports millions, millions of people and organisms. Fresh water suppliers around the world are dwindling. You know, clean water is becoming a, a unique commodity. So we need to start valuing the places that create clean water free of charge. How's everyone? Here I am just by waterfall, five days in, um, yeah, doing well. I think the first two days were really hard just because it's like getting your, it's like acclimatizing to a new language, a new climate, uh, new people. So I'm slowly dipping into my comfortability every day. Um, and I still have 10 days left. And yeah, that's it, eh? but uh, loving it. What an opportunity. C'est très capital comme concevoir ces pâtes, c'est aussi, moi pour moi, c'est un sacrifice. Qu'est-ce que je peux donner à l'humanité C'est en termes de sacrifice. J'ai abandonné ma femme, j'ai abandonné mes enfants, j'ai abandonné ma maison. C'est pas facile de vivre à un endroit où il n'y a pas de connexion, il n'y a pas de communication. Quand vous vous retrouvez dans des zones qui sont hostiles à la vie, c'est pas facile. The rise of civil conflict and demand for Congo's precious natural resources has made Pemba an extremely dangerous area. Over two thirds of the park has been lost to Mai Mai militia groups for decades. It's also difficult because some of the areas of the park uh, are also, we also have settlements of armed groups. And unfortunately, we have had, you know, several armed encounters uh, in the last couple of years. And we also have lost rangers. I didn't understand the threat that I was putting myself into. You know, you can, in your head, understand the threat, but in your body you, you start feeling the threat a little bit differently you know you come here next thing you know you're you know you 30 k's away from base camp with no wi-fi no signal and ak-47s everywhere the rangers here are doing a phenomenal job it cannot be easy to to work here and always have to watch your back 
their lives are in danger. They put in their lives in more danger for us just to be here. People living around the park are very, very poor and their subsistence is depending on the, the use of uh, natural resources of the park. Sometimes rangers are facing uh, people in the park for the poaching, for uh, timber, for mineral activity sometimes. My responsibility is to create alternatives, to explain to people that we can gain livelihood without to use abusively the resource of the park. And this passed by engaging public responsibility of Congo government. We need to have a kind of counter narrative, you know, for the DRC government about what is the value of the park. So we want to be able to show that, you know, protecting Upemba is not only protecting wildlife, it's also protecting ecosystem services that are crucial, you know, for the development of all the region and also all the country. The certed lizard in the bucket trap. Look at this little guy, warming up overnight. So once we've caught these guys on the Sherman traps and we take all our measurements and weights, we release them back where we caught them. If the same individual gets caught more than once, we know that it's a recapture. Oh, hello. He's going to be called, I'm calling him Tiramisu. Tiramisu. Tiramisu, hello. Tiramisu. Yes, that's the good stuff. So we, we just got this snake. It's an awesome species. The first time I've ever seen this. So this is a Samophis, a whip snake. This is a great sample, especially from a phylogenetic point of view, to put in and see where this thing sits because I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of new things still to find in Africa and this might be a nice piece in the puzzle. This one here is a house snake. Oh, now he's getting cross. You see, he's like, don't do that to me. So this is an amazing animal, mainly because he controls rodent populations so incredibly well. So if it wasn't for snakes like this, uh, we would have a lot more rodents than we should have. Oh, we're out with uh, Alan Gardner, um, seeing if we find a couple new uh, butterflies to add to his collection of over 100. It's my first time uh, with a butterfly net, so it's a nice experience. Jeez, all that energy, bro. I did my first collection. <laughs> it's an accurate, of course. So butterflies um, are part of the system, and so they have an advantage that their life cycle is quite quick. So we can use them more as a biological indicator. Check with the expert if this one's worth it. I've got a, got a little yellow number. Butterflies are pollinators as adults. It also has a larva as a herbivore. In fact, your main herbivores are insects. They consume the most vegetation. And what they produce whether it's their dung which goes into the system and then it might be the plants we eat, it actually is all combined. And hence our need for healthy system will help us in the end remain healthy. And it's hard work being a butterfly guy, huh? <laughs> yeah. In a Pemba, I've learned that it's the smallest creatures, reptiles, insects, and other often overlooked species that quietly shape and sustain the ecosystem. But for this landscape to have a future, it can't remain unseen. The whole world needs to pay attention. You know, on this planet, um, everything has to have an economic value. 
it's, it's quite sad that that's where our world is right now. If it doesn't have an economic value, you know, people think it's worthless. But we have to plug into this economic system, you know, as conservationists. We have to talk the language of the global economy. And we have to try and define these landscapes in a sense that, you know, the capitalist kind of economic system can understand. And that's where we have to try and start defining and valuing the ecological services that a plateau and a park like this provide. My hope for this landscape would be for it to persist. It's a beautiful place and for it to continue to be a beautiful place would be the best thing that could happen to it. The Pemba is a keystone in the ecological tapestry of a whole continent. As international funding for conservation dwindles, it's more important than ever that we learn to value ecosystems in their entirety. We need to protect the fragile the overlooked, the complex. Because a place like this, once lost, can never be replaced. Thank you so much for watching this film. This is just the beginning. And in order for us to get out there and tell more stories around science, ecology and spirituality, we need your help. So please consider joining our Patreon page.